Hey everyone, I know it has been a long time since I last posted, uh, almost a year actually, but I am back and I have so much that I want to share with you. Uh, today I want to focus on the four main EQs from Slate Digital's Virtual Mix Rack. I want to compare their sound as well as perhaps give you some guidance on which ones to use and when to use them. I did spend some time before recording this video trying to make sure all of the settings between EQs were as close as they could possibly be. However, do keep in mind that there will be some differences in EQ curves as well as level. But I did do my best to keep them close. After you hear the differences of the EQs, we will return for Plugin Doctor and some of my thoughts on these plugins. Now I do recommend uh, headphones or a studio setting for this next portion of the video. So um, let's get started.
The first EQ is the FGS, which is modeled after the SSL. You will notice that just passing audio through this plugin does add some harmonic content. This also affects the frequency spectrum, but very slightly. And in particular, you can see that roll off of sub frequencies around five Hertz, which isn't really important for most engineers, but for those in sound design or film scores, this may be something that you want to keep in mind before using this plugin. Cutting and boosting with this EQ works as you would expect from an SSL, save the low pass filter function. On the original SSL, there was a high pass filter and also a low pass filter. Uh, for some reason, the low pass filter function is not included in this plugin. This EQ is good for your standard track to track EQ work and sounds great on basically everything. The next EQ is the FGA, which is styled after the API. Typically people choose API for its sound or character, which is why this plugin has a button which allows you to turn on or off the API saturation. You'll also notice that when the saturation is engaged, the EQ behaves slightly different and also frequencies from two kilohertz down get almost a two decibel boost. Here you can see the difference of turning on and off the saturation. The API style has a very particular sound and is commonly used for drums, guitars, or vocals. However, the beauty of audio engineering is that you can experiment, so be encouraged to try this on various sound sources. Next, we have the FGN, which is modeled after Neve style EQ. This EQ also adds character and harmonic content to the sound source just by passing audio through it. There is also an additional drive button to add additional saturation if wanted. The EQ curves of this plugin are very, very wide and can easily overpower the mix. A little goes a long way with this plugin, so use it sparingly. I personally have found that I use this plugin most on male vocals that have no bite or need more grit. I mean, you can see here as I'm sweeping through, the cues are extremely wide. This is the custom series EQ modeled to imitate behavior of various different EQs. Think of it as a Frankenstein EQ. The custom series is unlike the previous plugins because it doesn't use saturation for character, but instead the character is in the boosting and cutting itself. This EQ was designed to be extremely musical, so the boosting and cutting is based off of sweet spots and less about sweeping through the frequency spectrum to clean up the sound. You'll notice that when I boost, the rest of the frequencies get louder as well, but not at the same amount. And the Q is rather narrow, but when I cut, you'll notice that nothing gets wider or lower in volume, and the Q is wider. This EQ is about polish and shine as compared to the FGS, which is more surgical and standard. 
This EQ is best utilized on a bus. So that could be your two bus, that could be a drum bus, that could be a guitar bus, vocal bus, whichever channel you are using as a bus, this is the EQ that you want to use. Hope this video has been educational as well as entertaining. I will see you in the next video. Until then, happy mixing.